Hi guys, in this video I'm going to take you through a quick overview of the upcoming 8-bit Unity software development kit uh, which will allow you to develop simple games for the Commodore 64, the Atari 8-bit line as well as the Apple II. I guess the story starts with the uh, MOS 6502 processor uh, which was common to a lot of platforms in the 1970s and 80s like the Apple II uh, the Atari 8-bit line and the Commodore 64. And while once uh, I would have thought that it should be straightforward to program a game and uh, then deploy on each of those platforms, in actual fact, the uh, actual hardware for graphics and sound varies very widely between those platforms. And you'll find things like the Mockingboard on the Apple II, the Antic and Pocky on the Atari, and the Vic and Seed on the Commodore. To learn the specifics of each platform, there are guides like mapping the 64, mapping the Atari, or again mapping the Apple II. However, those are pretty thick guides with many, many pages. Just to give an example, this is one register taken from the mapping the Atari guide, uh, which has a function of uh, changing the priority order between uh, sprites and playfield. However, it doesn't just do that, it also has the ability to change the graphic mode. So trying to figure out how to draw sprites, how to draw a bitmap, can take a very, very long time for each platform. And that's what basically I've been doing for the past two years while developing 8-bit slicks. Having spent all this time learning the specifics of those platforms, uh, I felt it was a useful idea to bind all the functionality into a single application programming ad interface, or API. That's how the concept of the 8-bit Unity SDK came about. So now let's spend some time looking at the functionality that will actually be included in the initial release of 8-bit Unity. Here we start with the bitmap artwork, which you will have produced on your PC with any resolution and number of colors you may like. And in order to convert to the various platform, I provide uh, some palettes for GIMP in the SDK. And using GIMP, you're going to be able to resize and remap the colors of your original artwork. So on a Commodore, you will end up with 160 by 200 resolution in 16 colors. On the Atari, 160 by 209 colors, and finally on the Apple, 140 by 192 in 16 colors. As well as the ability to uh, load and display bitmaps, I have implemented some functions for drawing and printing characters on top of those bitmaps. So this is very useful for creating menus, chat boxes, uh, without having to worry uh, about the need for switching back and forth between bitmap mode and character mode. Included within the SDK, you will find a sprite editor called Pisco, uh, which is a, an open source project. And this excellent editor will allow you to create uh, the specific sprites for each platform. So bear in mind here that there are some differences. So the Commodore will allow you to generate 12 by 21 in three colors. Uh, the Atari will allow you to generate eight by any number of lines you want in two colors. And the uh, Apple will allow you to generate seven by any number of lines you want by 16 colors. Now bear in mind that this uh, question mark for the number of lines will impact on the drawing speeds. The more lines, uh, the slower your program will run. And also note that the Apple implementation is a complete software different driven implementation since the Apple II doesn't benefit from uh, hardware sprite. For music, you will find playback functions for SID files, RMP files, as well as electric duet files. There is at the moment no facility to generate those files, but that is planned to be included in the next release. As for sound effects, uh, you will find some generic functions for uh, engine sound, bleep sound, bump sound. So it's very basic at the moment, uh, but it will for sure grow in the future releases of the SDK. For the networking side, 
uh, there is support included for various uh, Ethernet hardware, uh, the RRNet on the Commodore, the Dragon Kart on the Atari, and the Ethernet on the Apple. Now, those hardware can uh, talk to the Internet, and the Internet can uh, then talk to uh, some UDP server you would have set up somewhere. And inside the UDP SDK, I include an example of a Python uh, UDP server, uh, which you can run locally and test uh, the functionality of this uh, UDP communication. And finally, a very useful function is the packing tool, whereby having generated your bitmap, your sprites, and as well having prepared your seed file, uh, you would like now to easily put all this data onto the disk and thanks to some Python packaging software, you'll be able to automatically uh, convert the data into the right format and interface it with your C code. So what kind of games will you be able to produce with 8-bit Unity 1.0? Well, at the moment, the main limitation is that uh, you can display only one bitmap at a time so you probably will be limited to producing uh, top-down racing games, uh, perhaps with a bit more work, uh, strategy games limited to a single screen, and for sure uh, point-and-click adventure games are another target. Please note that currently character tiles and scrolling are not supported. They will be supported in a future release, but not in 8-bit Unity 1.0. So doing some platformer game is just not possible at the moment. Initial release of 8-bit Unity is planned for February 2019 as a free download. If you would like to support this effort, it's possible to uh, become a patron on my Patreon page. Uh, you will see that I have one patron so far. So I want to thank Mark for uh, being such an early uh, supporter of this project.